Okay, let's get diving into today's topic where we're going to be talking about um, really going into that same topic, how to get more set asides. And I'm assuming uh, everybody wants to get more set asides who are doing business in the federal market. Whether you're on the training or not, I know that we want to get more set asides because those are really good for us. But as much as I, I talk about small business success and I um, teach a lot of the facts around small business set asides, et cetera, I'm still just totally shocked when I um, encounter numbers like the ones I'm going to share with you in a second. I was given a, uh, I've given a lot, a couple of speeches in the last few weeks. And um, at these environments, I'm bringing data and evidence. I really like to bring facts. But when I go back in and look at them again, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is something that's got to change. And this is why I train on a regular basis is because I want to help you and me change things, not look to the government to change things. Hopefully they'll improve on their side. But here's some examples of um, facts that relate to what we're going to be talking about today. In fiscal year 2023, the, uh, the federal government had a lot of contracts out there, but there's these ones called new contracts. So uh, if a contract was awarded two years ago and it's got option years, I left that out of this number. But new contracts, the government did 5,413,622 contracts. So 5.4 million new contracts in 2023. Of those, right, keep that number, 5.4 million 109,000 was set aside uh, to what we call total small business. So any small business can compete. But 109,000 sounds like a lot. But when I compare it to 5.4 million, I feel like that percentage is really, really low, right? And then um, if you come down further into the four small business programs, SDVOs, only 11,152 contracts, these new contracts were set aside uh, to SDVOs or service disabled veteran owned small businesses. And, and this thing to keep in mind as I'm throwing these numbers at you, it's one thing for a woman owned small business or an SDVO to win a contract that was full and open or something else. It's another for the government to have set these aside or for us to have convinced them to set aside. But only 11,000 out of the 5 million were set aside to veteran owned small business, service disabled veteran owned small business. For women-owned small businesses, that number drops drastically down to 2,845 uh, contracts. So 2,845 contracts out of 5.4 million were set aside to women-owned small business. This is why I'm doing this training today is because that number's got to change. And it can't just change by us pointing to the government and saying, those are bad numbers, you need to improve them. It's got to change by us. And there's ways we can change it from the outside right now with no laws, et cetera, and those are the ones that are the shortest turnaround. If we wait for things to change by the uh, agencies or the administration, it might change, but it might take decades to change. So 2,845 set aside to women on small business. That's just wrong. And it's got to change. And I, I want it to change. So then hub zones, 1,534 opportunities or, or contracts, new contracts were set aside to hub zone, a tiny, tiny fraction. And then 8A is a little different because the number is actually 872. And this is an important one to remember. 872 of those new contracts were set aside to um, small disadvantaged business slash 8A. 872, less than 1,000. Now, the upside is 8A gets sole sources all the time. And they had 5,524 uh, sole source contracts. But still, when you compare that against SDVOs had 11,000. Why is that discrepancy there on any of these? Um, and so we can change that stuff. And that's the whole reason that uh, I'm doing the training. And one of my things I really want to point out is that the reason those numbers drive me nuts a little bit and, and drive me to helping you is because the whole reason that we have these um, small business programs, theoretically, is that we want businesses to get them so that we can set aside opportunities for them to go after. And the government is spreading those dollars across the board. Um, it's really important for you to understand numbers because it helps you really uh, build your business. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so let's get more federal uh, set aside contracts. And by the way, so I said those numbers and they're, they're pretty bad, but I will tell you that I'm very optimistic about being able to double those numbers in, in the next year if we all just do what I'm going to suggest in today's training. We have the control. Uh, if we take responsibility for getting more set-asides, not blame, but responsibility, then we realize that we're in control. And I'm going to give you the tips for how to 
um, control your destination, if you will. So I'm going to break today's training, how to get more set asides for small businesses into four main components. I just want to uh, level set us with what are set aside contracts, just make sure we're tracking on that. Uh, what are they and why? And then I want to uh, really dive into the numbers more than what I just talked to you about. I really want you to understand the numbers. Um, and, and going with the numbers is that third bullet is um, which agencies are awarding in a set aside approach. So how are they awarding it and which agencies are awarding? I really want you to understand that as well, because it helps you going away from today's training, create a plan specific to your business. I'm giving you a plan for all of us small businesses, but you need to tighten it up. And then the last thing I'll talk about is uh, I'm going to give you step. I think it's five or six steps that is what it takes to uh, um, how to get more opportunities to set aside. And, and these aren't just uh, casual steps I'm giving you. I helped billions go to small business set asides in different areas, in particular hub zone. And these are the steps that I proved out worked and the small businesses all proved out worked. And so I want to share those with you. And it's not complicated. It's just a process. All right, so if you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I am the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I wanna welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success and an opportunity to network with other government contractors and, and sometimes federal buyers who might be in here as well. Um, since 20, or uh, I, I spent 20 years in the federal market as a small business owner, and since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we're gonna have repeatable, predictable results. That's what I believe you can have as it relates to set-asides, right? There's this process you can follow to have repeatable and predictable, meaning getting set-asides, and you can predict that maybe one out of four uh, or two out of three uh, opportunities or, or one, out of, uh, one out of two opportunities can actually be set aside when you do the process. And th that's why we do this training. It's the results I want you to have is that repeatable, predictable results today around set-asides. I want to thank those of you who, who registered for training. I appreciate that. We're going to do more lives next week. So make sure you register for training. When you do, it's a simple thank you from you to us, but it also lets LinkedIn push the word out to more government contractors who not only can come in for my training, but can come in and you can meet them and you grow your own network. Um, speaking of growing your network, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter, the Government Contracting Success Newsletter. It is the largest one out there on LinkedIn by two. Uh, it's twice as big as uh, the other government contracting businesses out there or, or uh, newsletters. And the reason, though, is because we constantly are putting value in there for you to be able to track. A recent um, post that we did was all on opportunities. And I've had so many people reach back to me after we put that out, appreciating the fact that we were helping sharing information. They didn't have to go dig for it. We pushed it to them. And in there were opportunities for people in construction or the manufacturing side or in IT services, cyber or professional services. So um, subscribe to that newsletter and join the rest of us. Okay, we've got uh, 20 minutes and driving right down into this. What are the set-aside contracts? Just kind of level setting this, right? The whole point of um, set-asides to me, right? And I always speak from my perspective. I'm not here to speak on the government's behalf, um, but it reduces competition. Sales is about uh, understanding your customer and eliminating competition. That really is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be figuring out ways to eliminate our competition by maximizing our strengths, minimizing our weaknesses, maximizing their weaknesses, right? We're always trying to eliminate competition however we can in, um, in fairness, right? And one of the ways we can reduce competition is influencing the customer's acquisition approach, the government's acquisition approach. That might be the NAICS code they choose. If they choose a NAICS code that has a lower dollar threshold, then some of those businesses will have graduated to large and we have less competition, right? Uh, another example of reducing the competition or the acquisition approach to reducing comp competition is which contract vehicle the government's gonna procure this requirement on. If we convince them to go to Oasis or GSA or something, we're eliminating the businesses that aren't on there. And so set-asides are the same things. There's four small business programs in the total small, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, in the government, we have a pool of vendors who want to sell to the government. That pool has large and small businesses. If you look at the small businesses, now we've reduced the larges out. We have a, a pool of about 343,000 small businesses who are selling to the federal government. And you can shrink down. When you think about um, 8A firms, there's about 5,400 of those. Now you're shrinking it down more. And so you see it right here, small business, hub zone, SDBO, woman on small business and 8A. 
And by the way, if you're a woman owned small business, now that means an SBA designated or certified woman owned small business, not the self certification. And so there's a difference between uh, the 95,000 or so self certified women owned small businesses and the, I think it's like 11 or 12,000 SBA certified. Big difference there. So make sure you're tracking on that. But these designations, um, these small business programs are basically, you know, we call them tags sometimes. Um, but for a requirement the government has or an opportunity, they're set aside. Sometimes it's full and open, meaning anybody can go after it. It's total small, meaning any small can go after it. Or it's one of these four programs. In uh, So I, I said since 2018, I've been doing this. In 2018, we used to call the GovCon chamber the Hub Zone chamber because when I started uh, the Hub Zone chamber, the Hub Zone program had been tanking. It had never hit its goal, and no one was really taking care of Hub Zone businesses to help them succeed. Um, we started the Hub Zone chamber and said that's got to stop. And the reason was because I had a Hub Zone company I had just started. And I was like, oh my god, this the Hub Zone program <laughs> sucks. It's like not helpful, and uh, so I got rid of that. I started this nonprofit and. As I ran it, um, we really improved the process. And one of the things we did was something called a set-aside call. And basically, we got our competitors together. And I'll talk about this again in a minute. But we got hub zone companies together, and we brought up an opportunity. We said, hey, here's an opportunity at the Navy. It's in Sources Sod. Or here's another one over in um, uh, EPA or something. And we were able to get companies to work together and then write responses to Sources Sod asking for it to be set aside to hub zone. In 2018, our first year out of the gate when we were doing this, Three billion more went to HubZone firms. It wasn't because of me and my team. We were influential. We helped them. But it was because we trained small uh, businesses, HubZones, to stop blaming government and to look in on themselves and go, well, what can we do? Because they're not changing. Like the government wasn't changing. So what can industry do? And industry realized that the most important thing they can do is show up to a source of something. I'll give you one quick example. State Department reached out to us and asked us to help them with a uh, opportunity they wanted to push to HubZone, but they couldn't get anybody to respond. In one day, we got almost 100 HubZone firms to respond. And from those responses to a source of sought that the State Department had, they determined to set it aside to HubZone. That ended up being a $200 million set aside. That was a huge deal. But the only reason the government was able to do it was so many HubZones who were qualified showed up and gave the government the confidence. And that's pretty much what it is. It's not just them. It's not just us but it's this um, coming together. And so we'll talk about that more. Let's talk about the dollars. I'm all about understanding the data that's in front of us. And so in this case, this is the numbers. What I'm sharing here is FY 2023 uh, information. And uh, in the middle column, what I'm saying is, look, all contractors, small, large, doesn't matter. Basically, we had $745 billion in contracts, total contract value uh, last year. Large's got 575, small's got about 175 themselves, 176. So small business, uh, small business is one. This is not set aside, and this is really important. Um, and then you can see the other numbers, right? HubZone companies got uh, eight or 14 billion in contracts. Um, Women-owned small business got 27 billion, right? These numbers sound really impressive, but if you go to the last column and you start looking at it, come from the bottom up instead of the other way, women-owned small businesses are doing $27 billion worth of contract value. But this women-owned set-asides, if you go into USA Spending or FPDS, you can look at how many contracts, new contracts, were awarded to women-owned small business. And it's less than a billion was set aside, set aside for women-owned small business. What that means is if they had set aside, um, th when they set aside to women-owned small businesses, only women-owned small businesses co could compete. And that's about a billion dollars. And so what the data tells us is $26 billion, women won because they went and took it. They went out and competed full and open or total small, or maybe it was a different designation and the government is double tagging or double counting their data. But either way, only a billion dollars was set aside to women on small business. We can complain about that, or we can do what I'm hoping you will see, and I'll talk about it in a minute. We can look at that and say, well, there's 26 billion that was out there that was won by women-owned small businesses in FY 2023, we should be able to take that 26 and convince the KOs that setting it aside to women-owned small businesses is not a problem. If you already awarded it to a woman-owned small business, then what do you care about doing it next time? Right? And I'll talk about that more in a second. But understand the numbers. This also is important when you think about your target agency. If you're looking at going into a particular agency, make sure that 
you know, they're going to award it to you one way or another. Otherwise, you'll be knocking on doors of people who are less interested in working with you, while the people who are more interested in working with you are over here and you're kind of ignoring them. Hey, really quick before I show you the, the more data and going into it, I do want to tell you that we've got exciting news about a new uh, web-based solution we're bringing out. It's to help companies under 10 million get to 10 million by driving towards solving their top three challenges um, that, that I have seen after helping tens of thousands of small businesses in the last six years. And those three challenges are getting in the door to meet with federal buyers, finding teammates who want to work with you, and then identifying, pursuing, and responding to opportunities you can win. If that's something you're interested in, just go sign the waitlist, govcon in a box.com. Just go over there um, and you can add yourself to the waitlist. I'd love to let you know about it. It's exciting. All right, so let's talk about who's awarding and how are they doing it. We're going to go look at the data really quick. But I'm going to go into USA Spending. I'm going to watch my time so I can come back and get to the last slide of steps we can take. Um, but I'm going to go into women, uh, USA Spending and I want to show you the set aside wins. And then I want to show you um, a similar type of uh, information, but non set aside. So, uh, an example is women owned small business set asides, and then no set aside, but women owned small business wins. So, let's go ahead and pop over there really quick. Oh, by the way, here's the site. So, GovCon in a box. Um, succeeding as a government contractor should be easier. Go ahead and register or just uh, sign up on that wait list. Okay. So, if you're not familiar, I'm in USA Spending. I'm going to go pretty fast because this is not a USA Spending training. But I'm coming in and I'm going to the filter over here on the right hand side. And so I'm just going back to last year. That's the last full set of data. Um, I'm going to close that. The next thing I like doing is contracts. And um, one other thing I left out, actually, time period, I'm going to choose the year. And then right here, I'm going to say show new awards only. I'm not really trying to look at recompetes um, since generally I can't compete on recompetes. This contracts means I don't need to look at loans or grants or anything else. I could have more information, but I don't want it at the moment. And then um, and then let me zoom out. You don't have to see this, but I'm going to come down here. And the last one is set aside. And I'm just going to start with women on small business since I know it's on the bottom and I can work my way up depending on how much time I got. So now I'm going to come up here to the top. I'm going to show you my filter really quick. So I just said three filters. The time period was last fiscal year. I'm looking at all contracts woman-owned small business, right? So when I come in here, this is where I get my data, right? I, I said there was 2,845. 2, it's right there. You see the filters. If I want to see how much that went to it here, I can see it was 506. So actually, when I gave you the 900, almost 1 billion, that was including the recompetes. This is just brand new set of sides. It was 506. And it's just uh, crazy for me. So now I want to just really quickly, I want to look and see who was awarding it. And I'm over here in categories, awarding agency, and I'm going to say sub agency, since that gives us a little bit more clarity. So right here, you can see, uh, this is actually pretty cool. The NIH has popped above um, uh, the Navy, and the Air Force, usually the Navy, Air Force and Army are all kind of together. But when you're looking at this, it's not that impressive. It really is not. Now, here's the thing I want you to see. So, so this is just remind you of the filter. All contracts, woman-owned small business, right? So let me get rid of this. And I'm going to come down here. In this part, I want you to pay attention because I'm not doing it to complain. I'm doing it to show you how you might be able to convince a KO or CO. By the way, contracting officer is KO or CO. In the Army, we call it KO because CO is commanding officer. Um, but here, I got rid of the set aside and I said, show me the recipient type where it's a woman-owned small business. So now my search right there is FY23, all contracts and the recipient type, not the set aside, recipient type is woman owned small business. And look at this. I don't know if you remember the other one, I wish I, I kept it open, but it was basically less than a hundred million for the Navy, the Air Force, uh, NIH is somewhere down here. Um, and, and the Army was less than a hundred million for set aside to woman owned small business. But when you come in here and you look at these women owned small businesses are winning in there. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, DLA, VA, they are all awarding contracts to women on small business, but they're not doing as many set-asides. That's a really important thing to remember because for me, I would begin to dig down into this data to find opportunities that are in my space. Like I might look for cybersecurity or administrative support services with this same filter. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing it, but right here, if I had these filters, I would then sit there and try to find 
Uh, and actually, let me just try it. It's always scary when I do things live that I didn't uh, plan for. But if I just went in here and said, show me, uh, sorry, 541611, I think, is administrative support services, right? So I'm going to push this one more time. Two billion, two and a half billion, 1.7, 1.5. It's going to drop massively, but let's see what we got. Um, so here you go. So now I'm looking in here saying here are... Uh, women-owned small businesses in the, it's funny, the VA tends to have a lot more, but women-owned small businesses on administrative support. So this is something I can go in. I can find these opportunities and dig further into them, talk to the contracting officer, and I'll talk about this more in a second. But when I talk to the contracting officer and I'm looking at this data, I can say, you're already awarding it to a woman-owned small business. Why don't you just set it aside the next time the incumbent can still compete, but then, you know, we're just tightening it up. Um, influencing the contracting or acquisition approach with the contracting staff. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't always go the way you want, but it's really easy. It's a conversation with some data and evidence. If you give them data and evidence, um, they will appreciate it. So I'm going to uh, pause for a second, but you can see how I'm doing this, right? Is if, if I went in here and I was digging out and trying to figure out um, which agencies are most likely to begin to do it and to, to set aside to my designation, I might do the same thing really quick on, I did this, but let's go to um, specialty, which is HubZone. So if I'm a HubZone firm, I'm looking for companies, or not companies, but agencies that are awarding to HubZone firms. Uh, oh, I didn't clear my thing here, hold on. Uh, the NAICS code. Get rid of that guy. And then come up here and run it. So now, really quickly, I'm able to show that if you look at the army, 1.7 billion to hub zones, right? If I'm a if I'm a hub zone, frankly, or an 8A, I need to be looking at the DOD space. If you're not in the DOD space, it's really important to get into it. One of the best ways, by the way, to get in there is go find another hub zone if you're a hub zone or another woman on small business. If you're a woman on small business, because then um, whatever work you go after, it can be considered a similarly situated entities, meaning if they gave you just a small piece of their 51% and they're working with somebody else as well, then they can bring you in. It's a great way to start building your experience in DOD, which has a little bit more of a lift to get into than civilian agencies. Okay, so let me give you some steps on how you can do set-asides. I have done this uh, over a thousand times, but I did it 450 times in one year. Right. And, and my team has done it. Now I've got people actually who do it on their own. Um, and they're like they're um, thinking about it, little chapters of set aside calls where they bring together people to go after opportunities together. They're the ones who are winning stuff set aside into the vehicle or the or the tag that they want. But here's what you can do. The first step is uh, identify an opportunity with minimal friction. And what I mean by this is if you're trying to get something set aside to woman on small business, I'm just going to use that as our example today. Don't go after an opportunity that is currently uh, the incumbent and the set aside used last time was an 8A. It's just going to stay that way. And same thing probably if it was an SDBO or a hub zone. If it was already designated something, that, that's increasing the friction of it being able to switch to your set aside. But if it was full and open, meaning anybody, or total small, then the chances of you bringing it over to woman-owned small business is huge. And like I showed you, there's 109,000 um, set asides at... Uh, as total smalls. So that's the first place I would look. Then I would look to full and open actually, because I believe a lot of stuff goes full and open that should not. Uh, but anyways, identify something that's pretty straightforward because then you're making it, giving the contracting officer this easy path to say, okay, we'll set it aside. So that's the first thing. Second thing is reach out to the KO. When we did our set aside calls, when I talk about those hundreds of calls, first thing we did was call the contracting officer to see if they're open and still considering setting it aside to any designation, right? It doesn't matter which one's in there, uh, but there's a couple of things about it. First off, if you can't reach a KO, that's a sign sometimes that it's it's not gonna be easy for you. The second thing is they might wave you off. Uh, no, we're probably gonna go SDBO. We just put it out. Um, so reach out to them. It's a quick call. Uh, you know, Maybe it takes 15, 20 minutes total time. You might have to do it over several days to finally reach them, but it's a minimal lift. And if you're doing it early enough, that's not a problem. The next one is engage with uh, the small business professional in that target agency. Make sure they know you're responding and you've got 10 friends who are going to respond who are all women-owned small business. We're not co we're coordinating our response. We're not uh, coordinating or consolidating or conspiring our response, right? 
everything above board. We're just going to make sure 10 or 20 people respond, which goes into um, number four. Make sure you build this team of, again, let's go with women on small business set aside. You should have a team of uh, 10 to 20 women owned small businesses, and they don't have to be a tight network, but they just have to be in your space one way or another. And ones who are interested in getting more women owned small business set asides. If they are, then you can say, hey, if I call a meeting and say, here's 30 minutes, I'm going to go over the opportunity, answer any quick questions about the requirements. And then you all go off and we all respond. Number five, respond to a source of thought and ask for it to be set aside to women owned small business. By the way, if you're multi-tagged, if you've got SDBO and woman-owned small business, don't ask for both because you're basically asking for nothing. You're leaving it up to the KO to just choose. Well, you, you could have not asked and they would have just chose, right? Instead, determine whether you want more SDBO set-asides and you have a pod for that or a woman-owned set-aside and a pod for that. But drive towards one thing because what you want is that KO to get a bunch of responses and they all have a paragraph. And I have this on my website as a blog, um, the paragraph that I used for um, pushing 3 billion in opportunities. And I mean a ton of teeny small opportunities under a million dollars as well as bigger ones. But uh, a paragraph in there that specifically says, please consider setting this aside to women on small business. What the contracting officers need is validation that more than uh, a few people are gonna show up in the source of thought. This rule of two, I say, forget about it. And the reason is because rule of two what it really means is the contracting officer has to have a reasonable expectation that two companies will submit qualified proposals that I would be comfortable awarding to either one. That's the rule of two. In order to get that, I need five or 10 responses to my RFP. In order to get five or 10 responses to my RFP, I need 20 or 30 responses to my sources sought. This is why I'm saying you want like 20 women on small businesses who are all responding to get it set aside. It doesn't always have to be that high, but the more you submit, the more confidence the contracting officer will have that, hey, if I set it aside to women and small businesses and this many showed up in sources sought, then I'm pretty sure the, um, then we'll see a similar thing in the RFP. All right, here's what I want you to remember. I know I'm uh, right down to the wire on time. Three steps for you to take away from today. First thing is pick one agency and kind of drive at this. Pick an agency that is either already doing a lot of women-owned small business set-asides or one that is already uh, awarding to women-owned small businesses in whatever designation, because those are ones you can convince the KO that you already trust women-owned small businesses or whatever tag, right? Build that team of competitors I talked about a minute ago, and then pursue one opportunity, figure it out. Reach out to me and my team, and we can kind of give you a little guidance if you want, but pursue an opportunity and try to push it to set aside. All right, that was a fire hose worth of information. You can watch the replay if you need to. Uh, reach out if you have questions. And just remember, government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. I will see you in the next training.